Now we come to the next talk, um, which is very important for us as a society, because when we want to make sure that we move away from fossil fuels to sustainable energy, then we are talking about smart metering every now and then, every here and there. And the problem is with all that, whenever you can control something from a distance, it's likely that you can exploit it from the distance. And now is the moment to ask to come on stage Christoph, who is an expert in the field. He's CEO of Secret. And um, yeah, please join me in applauding and welcoming Christoph. Thank you. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, very good intro, by the way. Uh, you probably stole like 50% of my presentation. Oh, no, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So uh, yeah, uh, a bit of introduction by myself, uh, since this is my first time in this conference and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I am an engineer by education. Uh, I graduated uh, with a major in software engineering. I am strategic consultant uh, by experience. I spent like most of my professional life working for Ernst & Young and the Boston Consulting Group and advising customers and organizations in the CI, critical infrastructure operating domain, including energy, power and utilities, uh, transportation, military and uh, public services, uh, public administration services. Uh, yeah, but privately, uh, after my corporate life, I kind of uh, dedicated myself to becoming a ninja warrior. Uh, maybe some of you know, but this is like a American based franchise. It's called American Ninja Warrior. It's like very big show in NBC in the US. Uh, it came to Poland to, in 2018 and basically uh, I'm very proud of that. This is a topic for separate presentation, but I approach the challenge of actually uh, participating and being in the show because it's not that easy. You just apply and they get you. You need to basically train, prepare without actually being sure that they get you to the, to the show. So I approach it like a project and uh, execute it, and I'm very proud of that. So, uh, but as, as mentioned, this is a topic for additional presentation. So, uh, professionally, right now I lead like OT security, uh, uh, OT security team, and since 2018, we've been researching topic of uh, advanced metering infrastructure. Uh, we kind of identified it then, back then, like a niche. Because like energy sector, especially in Poland, they didn't talk much about it. And considering the fact that our team involves security researchers who are very eager to put their hands on the like remotely, but but physically available and accessible devices, we're like there must be something that you can break about it, right? So uh, we started our endeavor in 2018. Since that, we've been in a number of projects for mostly DSO, distribution system operators, and we leveraged our, our experience from the research in the projects, and I wanted to share with you key insights. Uh, to give you a context, uh, from for I wanted to tell a few words about one incident, security incident. Uh, it's 2018, uh, winter, uh, in Eastern Germany and Western Poland, a DSO start observing local blackouts, so uh, the energy provision disruptions uh, to the consumers. Uh, the information hits the news, then basically uh, considering the fact that uh, the situation appears in distributed and multiple locations and considering the fact that there weren't like very specific exceptional natural conditions noted and accounted for, there is one of the hypotheses about the potential causes uh, investigated is cyber attacks. So basically when they analyzed uh, incident responders, when they analyzed uh, status of the grid, they have identified extreme fluctuations in demand for energy. So that was one trace. Then when investigated further, they have identified that uh, basically for the population of consumers, it looked like they dropped their consumption in like coordinated way. Uh, in like very short time period. Analyzing the, the in the meantime, DSO started receiving calls from uh, remote and uh, and site site maintenance staff, indicating that there must be some there might be some malfunction with the smart meters. When they investigated network traffic for the smart meter subnetworks, they have identified that 
unauthorized and basically independently of the DSO, there has been a disconnect instruction sent to the smart meters, which caused actually disconnection of, of consumption for the consumers affected. So the final forensic result indicated that there was a backdoor actually in the, in the software and the firmware of the, of the smart meter, which allowed for this kind of unauthorized action for the threat actor. The thing is that this is like a fiction, fiction fictitious story. It's been actually, uh, it comes from the novel by Mark Ellsberg. This is like Austrian, Austrian novelist, and uh, it was initially released in 2012. Uh, so the question is whether this is like probable and possible that it might happen. And in 2021, there was offensive operation targeted at uh, North American utility. Uh, which actually resulted with, with such a situation. How did it come about? Uh, yeah, so it started with the phishing campaign, the phishing campaign armed with, uh, with uh, malicious uh, Microsoft Office document equipped with the auto-executable macro and basically the macro and executed um, and that gave initial access for attackers uh, using Cobalt Struck Beacon. And uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of access then needed to be, to be uh, escalated. They have escalated uh, their privileges to admin, to domain admin users using publicly available uh, offensive tools like the LDAP search, Mimikatz, and Powersploit. Um, then they used their administrative, administrative uh, uh, credentials to actually use Microsoft uh, System Center Configuration Manager to distribute the policies to pre-selected workstations uh, in order to establish CNC capability with those workstations, to have an access to those workstations. And, but those workstations were uh, specifically pre-selected. It included users from uh, groups like network administration, firewall, uh, firewall management, uh, control engineering, and uh, smart meters operation. What happens then? They have, uh, they managed to extract information from those workstations. One was uh, RDP, RDP logon credentials to the OT network. The, the other one was uh, AMI, AMI, Advanced Metering Infrastructure Solution design documents. The third one was OT firewall configuration. And then uh, H HES, HES, so the head and systems on so the centerpiece that basically is used as like central server for managing the, the population of the meters, credentials uh, for the uh, for the panel control panel for uh, for uh, has users. So uh, the thing was that they wanted to actually approach and get access to the OT network, but the RDP connection didn't work. Uh, the credentials didn't work because it required uh, additional authentication factors. So good on the defender side. But in uh, analyzing OT uh, firewall configuration, they have identified like open path for uh, communication between IT network and uh, uh, Microsoft Windows uh, patch management server, which operated in uh, the DMZ between IT and OT network. And using this open path, they got access and hold on to the host hosting this uh, patch management server and uh, using uh, vulnerabilities, I don't have the specifics, uh, using vulnerabilities of the host, they got hold of OT domain, admi admi uh, domain administration, uh, domain controller in OT and extracted credentials for has uh, for HES uh, user. Uh, basically, the thing was that the HES credentials that they found before, they were actually for the read access and reading data from meters, but the ones that they found in OT, uh, OT uh, domain controller, they were actually with the management access and using this access and logging to the HES management console, they switched off uh, the meters for the population of consumers. Another good information about this one is that was basically successful attack, but that was a, a advanced uh, red teaming exercise conducted by Mandiant. The thing is that so far I didn't come across uh, the documentation of successful uh, cyber attack actually resulting with the blackout using this vector. It doesn't mean it's not real and it's not potential. It means that we were just lucky so far. So. Basically, why talk about it now specifically? Uh, you know, right now, but you know, s since uh, already like almost almost 12 years, I think there's been a, a push for a grid efficiency and managing energy efficiency uh, across the grid. That's as specifically important when you consider renewable gen uh, energy sources and the fluctuations of uh, of the energy that is produced by renewables, right? So. 
in order to manage the grid and balance the demand with the generation, you need to have pretty much up-to-date and pretty much granular data about consumption. And this is motiv key motivation for smart meters. So recognizing that EU has released directive, basically, and simplified, uh, and simply put, obligating member states to roll out the meters uh, across majority of their uh, location of their regions. And uh, basically, for till 2027, which is basically deadline set by EU, uh, the market size for the smart meter devices is estimated to be at about over 200 million devices. So considering interdependencies between different, different components of AMI solution and interconnections between them, it's like a, it's like a, a wonderland for potential attacker. Lots of, lots of opportunity to, to get access. Basically, Switzerland, uh, uh, Swiss uh, energy industry is basically even more specific about it, but it's also like, uh, has like more, more, let's say, responsible approach because it indicates specifically uh, that 80% of the smart meter, of the metering, metering infrastructure used at the consumers, but also at the generation and also storage facilities must be the intelligent ones the smart ones, but on the other hand, it, it instructs that those, uh, those devices, they must have been uh, subject to the security testing and they must pass those security tests. So basically, it's, uh, it's even more notable than, uh, than, than uh, the directive by EU. So considering those, those aspects of the rollout strategies for smart meters, so what is like the challenge from the point of view of cybersecurity? Uh, based on our experience from the project, there are four common uh, cybersecurity pitfalls for uh, AMI, advanced metering infrastructure. First is questionable security of the smart meter devices. The second one is the fact that uh, DSOs tend to replicate secrets used to secure communication with the smart meters. The fourth one is, is basically, in many instances, uh, the uh, segmentation and the monitoring capability for the smart meter networks is insufficient to be able to detect efficiently uh, potential cyber attacks, but also basically late or limited involvement of the cybersecurity uh, department at, uh, the for sure at the early stages of the AMI implementation project. So how to go about that and how to fix this? First of all, how do you go about securing uh, smart metering devices? I have to mention uh, the Swiss approach to that because so far, based on, on, on the research of the results of our research, uh, Switzerland has, has got the, the most comprehensive and basically the best framework to securing the smart meter devices so far. First of all, it includes the regulate, regulatory framework, so it basically defines obligation that only uh, the meters that, are, uh, that were successfully security tested can be installed. The second one is there's industry-led uh, initiative that basically delivered already uh, a standardized procedure for security testing of such devices, but also the other components of AMI infrastructure. Uh, the fourth one is uh, space for actually recognizing the space for independent security testing labs. And the fourth one uh, is um, uh, basically recognizing certification authority and assigning the certification authority to the Federal Office of Meteorology and Accreditation. And I think it's practical. I think it's, it's, it's rigorous, but basically it gives, uh, it gives a good framework for, for enforcement of, uh, of, of this regulation. And on the other hand, it's not discriminative because basically it creates space for independent testing labs, but I think that the f fact that that regulations actually demand this kind of security testing being uh, being executed, and there's a federal office involved as like a certi certifying uh, a certifying authority, it gives a good background for enforcing this kind of standards. So, uh, yeah, but. You, you, let's assume that you are CISO or you are sec in security department uh, in the DSO and, and you basically, you, your company bought, bought a population, let's say like 30,000 of, of smart meters which are certified. Does it mean this is all you have to do to secure them? The simple answer you probably 
you are probably think uh, think right is is no because in one of the engagements we had like the 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 meters that were subject to to the security test by vendors but still when we got this meter and when we tested it for the purpose of the DSO we were able to identify three zero days new newly discovered vulnerabilities and uh, something that is called Gurus this is the LMS calls them stack implementation the stack implementation is interesting because it's open source but it's also OEM'd by multiple uh, smart meter vendors because you don't have to write implementation of the protocol on your own you just use what's what's in there in the market it's tested but still we were able to find to find the vulnerabilities and the thing is that the testing methodology like the one issued by Swissmic which is a very good one by the way uh, but also uh, the standards like the common criteria security profile for smart meters they focus on defining security requirements like that the equipment should fulfill basically it doesn't they don't give like the de detail uh, guidance on what kind of tools and tactics should you use when testing this kind of devices. So uh, that can result with the fact that you, you are not sure when you are on the on the security side and, and you try to secure this infrastructure that the that the test tools and the test methods that were used reflect actually your threat profile. So basically the tools and the methods that can be used by the threat actors that you have in your threat model so that's why it's very critical to understand to not just you know accept the fact that the device was certified but to uh, stress the fact that you need to cooperate with the vendor or this uh, testing lab to understand what scope of the testing was actually applied to the device so and and make sure that the scope of the testing covers your own risk model uh, that you have for the devices if it's though if there's a gap you should fill it and include this kind of additional testing in the uh, army rollout project the second one of the potential vulnerabilities that can be discovered is related to the misconfiguration we basically tested in one of the projects we uh, we were engaged to test uh, production configuration of the meters the meter on on, on this own was already tested and uh, certified in the, certif the certificate indicated that it has uh, non-volatile memory uh, encrypting capability but the fact was that we discovered unprotected quite sensitive data in the meter memory because this kind of uh, data which are about APN configuration for the mobile mobile uh, modem for the for the meter when actually extracted from the meter when you have physical access to the meter and used with the SIM card, which is in many cases uh, unprotected, uh, give you access to the DSO network. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, when you just consider that the meter has certain capability to encrypt the memory, but you don't test the actual configuration that is in there, uh, ready for production, you are not sure that this capability has been applied and your requirements has been fulfilled. So I certainly recommend like including testing this final production uh, configuration of, uh, of the devices before the rollout, uh, apart from, from the testing, uh, from the certification. The second aspect that I mentioned is basically re about reusing secrets. So the LMS COSM standard requires for individual for individual meter uh, to have like uh, four different and distinct uh, association passwords. It also assumes that for the purpose of securing communication with the meter, you need to have l about ten different keys, encryption keys stored in the meter. And uh, yeah. So considering considering like the installation of three, uh, three uh, thirty thousand uh, devices, you end up with something like one hundred uh, one hundred twenty thousand. Uh, distinct passwords and uh, 30, 300,000 uh, distinct uh, encryption keys, uh, cryptographic keys. So it gives like a half a million secrets to manage, not to mention the history that is, that is uh, um, uh, often uh, uh, required to be stored in the meter. So it's quite a complex challenge to manage this, this amount of, of secrets, right? So in many cases, oftentimes we saw uh, DSOs cutting corners in implementations of, of AMI and basically reusing passwords words and reusing keys for the population of the meter. The result is that if you are an attacker and you get hold of, of one of the meter, basically that means that uh, the bar uh, significantly is, is lower uh, for the access to, to other, other meters in the population, uh, which employs reused passwords or uh, keys. Uh, so how to solve this? Uh, there is no simple answer, but there's practical one. 
First of all, the LMS COSM doesn't come with the ready-to-use framework for the solution architecture for managing keys. It just, just gives capability for transporting them and replacing them. But uh, so basically, in order to make sure that you cover this kind of uh, the, this space of risk, you need to for sure involve uh, uh, experienced PKI architect in the project. And uh, I would also recommend working with the vendor, with the AMI components vendor, which already has experience integrating their HES solution with the key management solution. Some, some, I know that there are some vendors that do that, that have experience in that and that they are successful. I would certainly leverage this kind of partnership uh, in order to cover this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, potential entry point and uh, this point in potential attack surface. Yeah, and uh, network architecture. So how do you go about building like secure network architecture? So first of all, you want to, you want to make sure that in the subnet that is built of, of devices connected via 3G GSM modems, you should use dedicated APN, APN. I know that might be obvious for you, but we found instances of the subnets that were actually claimed by the network operator to have been built on the dedicated AP, APNs, but we still managed to fight the smart meters of different DSOs in those in those subnets so this is this is one use dedicated apn the second one in order to limit potential for the pivoting during the attack from one meter to the population of the meters you should establish like the virtual point-to-point -point communication between meter and has and this is basically most often uh, done by using gre or ipsec tunneling that's very efficient and when you work on it with your uh, network op mobile mo network operator uh, that would be that would be quite sufficient control mechanism. The other one is capability to ensure capability to monitor uh, uh, monitor the network for the for the purpose of identifying potential anomalies related to potential attack. And this is basically placing IDS on the edge uh, on the edge device on the side of the of the HES. Quite quite straightforward, but but basically you should consider IDS, which has capability to analyze and and work on the DLMS cousin protocol. And uh, last but not least, uh, device fingerprinting because what happens you know in many cases the sim cards that are used for the smart peters they are not secured with uh, with uh, pin codes so whenever you take the take the meter off the wall and take the sim card and use the apn configuration data you can con you can connect your own modem to the to the subnet in order to detect such situation we recommend uh, recommend for the sos using like a device fingerprinting and periodically monitoring monitoring the subnets with the smart meters for the presence of devices not matching the fingerprinting. The fingerprinting is basically about uh, defining like what kind of ports, for example, the device has, um, uh, the smart meter usually has um, open and, uh, and, and such, uh, such characteristics. Uh, yeah, so uh, a cartoon, uh, but inspired by life. Uh, based on our experience uh, for big business initiatives driven by the business in the energy sector uh, security is is neither is, is uh, either engaged late or not at all in such initiatives especially at like early stages or the first stages of the, the rollout process so we saw security requirements completely omitted from the scope of the project we saw security competence security department involved at the testing phase of the project. So basically in such case security ends up as like at least as, as being a naysayer and basically delaying the rollout and uh, implementation of the business business priorities and in the worst case they are like showstopper if there are, there's like huge huge risk involved uh, in in the implementation. So um, yeah, so probably some of you might say, yeah, this is obvious, like, you know, you don't need to tell us that we are not the right crowd, business should be addressed with this communication. But I saw like two patterns of actually behavior by uh, CISOs. One is uh, the pattern when, uh, when CISOs, they mind their own business. And when, uh, let's say, business, business department uh, announces, uh, announces new initiative and they invite CISO for consultation, the CISO gives guidance. Some CISOs, they just uh, put down the procedures and the guidelines say they, and they expect business to just you know, comply and that, that's it. 
And the other ones, and basically I like this approach the best, they just show up in the in the business initiatives uninvited. I actually saw a couple of, of guys like that in the energy sector, and they were like, they actually got to know about particular initiatives related to the smart meters from myself, because I got to know about it from Siemens, which basically approached me whether I can secure this installation. And I called CISO and, hey, do you know that your business is basically working on this initiative? And he was like, I don't know that, but thank you for letting me know. In two days' time, the business already had to put him on board because he ex escalated that to the CEO, that you know, uh, the, this initiative happened without him being involved, and the CEO, CEO was aware of the risk profile. So I encourage you, you know, to, to advise people or yourselves to be on the side of pro proactive CISOs, because in the end, you know, it's about our integrity to ensure that we do our best to protect uh, business, even if they don't want, they need to be protected. So that would be my last take on this. So uh, yeah, I try to be as fast as possible. I hope not too fast, but we still have time for the questions. Thanks, uh, Christoph. Very interesting presentation.